third pregnancy. It's the first time that I've ever been pregnant with twins. So that has changed some things for me. My second pregnancy, my workouts remained pretty consistent over the course of the first, until like around seven, eight months. When I got to be nine months pregnant, and I mean, I generally trusted my body and slowed down as it went. But um, this time, it's been a little bit different. So today, I'm doing six sets of 10, and back squat with some jump step ups. High reps are always nice for not putting a big load on, but also yeah. just getting a workout in. So, Lincoln used to lift when I was pregnant with Sanderson. Sanderson doesn't really lift that much, so. Particularly with this twin pregnancy, just sitting more has been really important and a really good gauge for me to make sure that I can still exercise, but I need to make sure that I'm taking a legitimate amount of rest. One of the things that has limited me significantly was I had a stroke when I was 20 weeks pregnant, so that was kind of shock and it was really out of the blue I didn't have any symptoms and it's changed the way that I've worked out because there's always this risk that it could happen again so I don't um, I don't know why it happened nobody really knows why it happened um, my neurologist is totally stumped besides the fact that pregnancy changes a lot of things in your body there's no there's no like risk factors, there's no cause. So I had this hemorrhage in my brain when I was 20 weeks pregnant and so exercise is still really important for pregnancy, um, but not pushing yourself has really changed the way I've worked out this pregnancy compared to other pregnancies. I actually hit a better clean and jerk when I was pregnant with Lincoln during my pregnancy that I ever hit, so I hit a PR clean and jerk. Now, because I was trying to like really PR, but because my weight was heavier, like I was 30, 40 pounds heavier than I was pre-pregnancy, so the, the moving the weight was not an issue. I, I caught a good, I think my PR was 80 kilograms then, so I, I clean and jerked 80 kilograms and I had ne never done that before. And then post-pregnancy, that was kind of my goal to hit that again after I recovered from the pregnancy. But yeah, so this this pregnancy, uh, I, I've really scaled back on the weight. So just getting in a workout is helpful, um, but not pushing my weights in any way whatsoever has been a really, a really big change. Working out is the only time of the day that I don't feel pregnant. As much as that's kind of weird, um, I, I feel like I can move my body in the gym and I don't think about as much how hard it is and how heavy it is um, to move around. Whereas when you sit down on the couch during the day or when I sit down in my office chair, it's like, it's so much more of a hassle to get up and to do things. Whereas in the gym, I feel good. I feel like I can move. And then afterwards I feel good too. Um, I feel like I just, I just did something. It gives me energy, um, at least temporarily because if I don't eat and I don't recover really well, um, and a workout is definitely gonna make me more tired later in the day. So recovery is, is a challenge, um, but working out is still really important. Working out just helps you get in a position so you don't 
normally get into, and it certainly helps your body prepare for birth and it just makes you feel better day to day. Alright, I'm just going to sit here and then we do couple sets of single leg and then some plate lines. So regardless of what weight I have on, I try to make sure that I can breathe steadily throughout rather than end up in a position where I'm holding my breath to try to push through. Um, that gauge for me is helpful in that I'm not pushing myself too hard. The other thing that happens is I get like cramps sometimes. I just don't want to push myself to the point of contractions because early labor is so much of a risk in twin pregnancy. So I never had to worry about that before. My first pregnancy I carried to 41 and a half weeks and, and it was the same with my second. So I never really thought that I would go into labor early. And it's such like a fallacy. Everybody thinks that like you're going to push yourself into labor just by lifting or working out. But um, for this time, it's like you worry more. Like, so when I do have a, a side stitch, which kind of ends up being like here, um, it's not really a contraction necessarily, but I think about that, that it could happen. So, so I always have to use that as a gauge and, and just take it easy. Take it easy, drink some water, sit down for a couple seconds. muscle groups that are gonna help me post pregnancy is also you know part of my focus so one of the things that tends to get weak when you after you have a baby is you know you end up holding like this so your upper back and your chaps get really weak so you're holding you're nursing you you know doing whatever so one of the things that I focus on particularly in this and other exercises is just like building that uh, the upper back muscles regardless of if it's a front rack or a row of some sort um, Developing those muscles are gonna help me later on when I have a baby to hold and I end up in like really poor posture. So focusing on posture, posture during pregnancy, um, especially and, and post-pregnancy as well. When I first was pregnant with Lincoln eight years ago, I scoured, I scoured the internet. I, sc I like went to my public library to look for examples of exercise during pregnancy. And, and I, I found so little that it was really frustrating. Like, I wanted to find something that was like permissive for me to exercise the way that I wanted to exercise. And, and I found that walking is really good um, and low intensity, low intensity cardiovascular type exercises are good for pregnancy. And that, that, that wasn't okay with me because I wanted to lift and, and I didn't necessarily wanna lift exactly the same as I did pre-pregnancy, but I wanted, I wanted permission to do some of the things that I was doing before. And basically my doctors, my midwives worked with me and they said, every, every visit I went to, I asked, well, well, can I do this? Can I do this? And I would bring them a list and they were like, you have to trust your body. And if you feel okay doing it, then it's okay for you to do. So um, since then, CrossFit has really um, opened the eyes for most people of what you can do while pregnant because so many CrossFitters you know, went through pregnancy and, and continue to CrossFit while pregnant. So that changed that changed um, for at least like the athletic arena that you can exercise and you can exercise intensely while pregnant um, without causing any harm and without doing any damage. They really trusted me that what you did before you can continue to do. So if you ran marathons, you can run marathons as long as your body is telling you that you can continue. I actually ran a little bit in my first pregnancy, but around six months it just didn't feel right in my body and I trusted that. But I continued to lift weights throughout my pregnancy and, and it still felt good. Um, so, so it was something that I continued to do. You can reach me. Space cool like ET. It's the plug, to call me. I was up. A way to work my hamstrings and I can, um, I can push off enough to give myself assistance that um, if I need more help as my body gets heavier, then I can, um, I can give my, myself the right amount of resistance. Um, the other thing though is people get really worried about the babies because my stomach is touching the parallel surface. So uh, 
it like it freaks people out like oh you're hurting your baby um, but I'm not actually lying on my stomach um, same goes for Olympic lifts when I was Olympic lifting a lot during my second pregnancy um, everybody thought that when the bar hits your belly that you might be like damaging or like doing some harm to your baby um, and I even showed my midwife like I was like look this is what I'm doing like here's an example of a clean and jerk and uh, she was like well you know the baby sits in this like big balloon full of water so if the bar like touches your belly then it's not a big deal because it's it's sort of like you know bumping into that water balloon and and there's no like harm being done direct harm to the baby so um, that was like reassuring uh, overall but it's kind of the same with that exercise just because you're pushing on your belly in some way or, or your belly touches the floor um, I'm not slamming my stomach against anything your baby could certainly get hurt if you fell down the stairs or if you fell onto your stomach very hard um, but for the most part uh, a gentle brush of the bar or you know touching my my body against that surface is is not going to damage or do any harm to the baby Seems to be the last couple reps that I push a little bit harder help myself out I feel this in my hamstrings but also it strengthens my low back so that's also some something that's really weak during pregnancy as your belly grows keeping your low back supported as well it's helpful I try to move through the workout quickly because I don't have a lot of time and I know my kid's gonna need something and I have a lot of work to do so just getting in the workout is more of a priority than the intensity of the workout or the weights that I'm using I know that it's the best thing for my body to just um, to just have my heart rate elevated it's good for my blood pressure it's good for just overall health to get some exercise in so without worrying about what weights I'm gonna hit and and how hard I'm pushing myself. Walking is also good. I, I do try to walk throughout the day. Um, when my kids at soccer practice, I'll, I'll go for a walk, brisk walk. It's helpful, uh, but I don't know. There's something about lifting weights that I feel like is really good uh, during pregnancy. And the time of my workout. So uh, 45 minutes to an hour is a good day. Whereas if I was like in a peak training um, time before I'm pregnant, I would, my goal would be to get in like two workouts that are like 90 minutes um, a week and then an hour, maybe two other times a week. So four to five times a week. So scaling back the actual time is also gonna come with the intensity of that. I don't take as many time, I don't take as many warm up sets. So, I don't have to get to those heavier lift sets because I'm just getting through five sets um, at whatever weight that I can get them at. This exercise, this exercise is the closest that I've come to cleans really um, since I was 20 weeks pregnant. So getting in a little bit of a movement with the shrug. Like I said, during my second pregnancy, I definitely cleaned a lot heavier for a lot longer, but this time around is not, it's not really possible. Um, mostly because my neuro doctors are saying, take it easy, don't do anything that is gonna be a Valsalva reflex that you're pushing or you're holding your breath. So um, those I do for fun and for my own mental <laughs> um, confidence that I'm still cleaning to a certain extent. Nobody wants to do any studies on pregnant women, so there's not a whole lot of research out there on pregnant women. So um, I guess those are all some reasons. It's mostly case studies. You know, you find somebody who did it and it's good and they did okay and then, so, um, but nobody actually wants to study pregnant women is probably part, part, part of it. Why do you think that is? Um, because if, if a borderline, if anything is borderline dangerous, nobody wants to put women in a position that, that could, they could be doing something dangerous. So that's part of it. Um, but it, I'm sure you could find volunteers that want to exercise and want to exercise intensely during pregnancy. So if somebody was to research women who are very active um, on certain degrees to measure that activity level would probably be part of the control. Um, and then women that are um, just sedentary or, or somewhere in the middle of the line, you know, just exercising but not exercising intensely, it would probably be um, a worthwhile study to do.
Obviously, I can't do any ab exercises during pregnancy um, because you could really do damage when your abs separate um, down through the middle. There's not a lot of support, so you don't do any crunches or leg lifts or anything like that. Um, but general core stability is good, so doing some back extensions and hamstring pulls will, as upper body work is really just gonna support your uterus more than um, put strain on it. So well, holding my arms up is really just allowing me to work these muscles that are also helpful, again, in delivery um, without doing damage to, um, it's called diastasis recti, when, you're, when your abs split apart um, and there's, there's just like a space of non-support down the middle, which um, is something that I suffered from in previous pregnancies that it's a recovery process to really pull the, the, the outer abdominal muscles back together. Alyssa Montagna, Montagno was a sprinter. She ran in USA's when she was eight months pregnant and um, ran like a 220, you know, which is like 30 seconds slower than her best time, but it was amazing and impressive that she did that. She also, you know, took six weeks off. It's pretty much standard to take six weeks off after the baby's born. It's like you're in worse shape for the month and a half after the baby's born than you can be up to nine months prior. Uh, and then she started training again for USA's the following year. And uh, pretty sure she placed, or she might have won it in nine, nine months postpartum. But yeah, explosive movements during pregnancy are certainly uh, valid. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do a clean or a snatch um, safely during pregnancy. I think the biggest thing to, to think about when you're pregnant is that you need to trust what your body is capable of and what your body is capable of before pre-pregnancy is similar to what your body is capable of during pregnancy. So as a Division I athlete, I, I exercised pretty intensely in college, um, including Olympic movements like clean. And I know that my, my training age is pretty advanced. So when my doctors told me that I couldn't squat, with any weight, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I can't squat, like the average person squatting with 45 pounds, like if my max is 250 pounds on a back squat, then 45 pounds is a huge um, reduction in the intensity for me. So, so why can't I squat with a 45 pound bar when I was previously squatting with 225 pounds on? So. I mean, I do think that's something to, te to keep in mind for any women who are exercising during pregnancy. If you're at a similar situation than me, that you've used, you're used to exercising with pretty high intensity, you're, you're really comfortable with specific movements, um, particularly a CrossFitter who might be comfortable with, um, I do handstands or handstand push-ups or something like that. Like, I'm very comfortable with the way that my body is in an upside down position, so I feel confident that I'm not gonna hurt myself if I go into a handstand now, even with an extra 40 pounds um, uh, in my front. So um, trusting yourself and, and continuing to pr progress through exercises is one way that you can just monitor your body and monitor your routine um, so that you're continuing to stay safe for yourself and for your babies.